everybody. Happy Christmas. Today we're going to do a little a little recording, a, a little walkthrough on the gallery to highlight the gem show. We're standing out in the rain in Sag Harbor because we need you to see the Stephen Levine painting. This is the second large cat painting that we have. The first one sold within 20 minutes of posting it on our on our Christmas press release. Anyhow, we have some fabulous things inside. I can pull this down. We have some fabulous things inside for you to see for Christmas. Come on in. <laughs> To start, actually, we've got the Tim McGuire painting uh, called Evening Shadows. This is um, one of the paintings that secured his spot for the solo show last summer. Um, we just think it's beautifully, poetically captured that, that cool shadow, um, blue tone, lavender tones of the snow. And she's, he's um, counterbalanced that with the warm tones of the buildings behind and the, and the landscape. I just love this. And this is the hint of what we ended up seeing from um, Tim, which this is one of the most joyous paintings I've ever handled. Tim McGuire is living up in um, Nova Scotia. And in this painting, um, I, he actually did it very true to life colors from Nova Scotia. And that's what we had in our press release. And then it arrived looking almost Caribbean. And I was like, what's going on? And he's like, I don't know, the painting told me to do it. <laughs> and I consider this a very important breakthrough painting for Tim McGuire. And I also, in my heart of hearts, see this in a home that's got young children because it is so joyful. Um, and I absolutely positively love sitting here doing Zooms with this behind me. <laughs> um, anyhow, this is one of the major works in our GEMS show. A lot of people, think gems means little things, and I think it means fabulous things. Um, this is a fabulous, actually jewel-toned in many ways, painting in the gallery right now. Um, and I'm gonna show you another Stephen Levine painting. Stephen is, um, is kind of the hot ticket right now. <laughs> we've sold um, uh, more than half of the paintings that we've gotten, and we've only been working with Stephen again um, in the last month or two having um, uh, had a break. We worked with him uh, in the early 2000s as well. This is one of my absolute favorites. It's uh, an interior of the National Gallery in London. Uh, Stephen Levine is born in 1964. He's based in Minneapolis. And what I've noticed is that we actually have three or four important paintings, uh, important artists in the gallery are from Minneapolis. I want you to pivot around and see the Joe Paquette painting this is Rural Farm Delivery. This is a really amazing painting. This painting is a great example of a thing called the prismatic palette. And the prismatic palette is a way of looking at the, uh, the way light uh, comes through the atmosphere from the horizon line up to the top of the painting or the top of your view. Um, it creates a wonderful sense, um, or Joe Paquette has created a wonderful sense of foreshortening with the road. It's also a very interesting composition, but I love the, on the hill to the right, you can see those corn rows or what, I don't know what they're growing. Actually, those look like potatoes to me. Um, this is a very hot painting. We've had uh, several clients circling. Um, I doubt it's going to make it um, through the Christmas season without going home with somebody. <laughs> um, so I, uh, what I'd like to do is also point out that we've got um, three new paintings in our GEMS show, which is kind of a new thing, but we're somewhat organized this year. We have next year's schedule, or at least we have key elements of next year's schedule locked in. This is very important because these are three early paintings for the solo show that we're having for Darius Yektai. Darius Yektai was born in <laughs> Southampton. He is one of our most local painters. Darius Yektai is our new art star, I like to say, because it's true. We almost sold out of his show in June. Um, one of the important paintings in that show was the Water Lilies painting, which we probably could have sold five times over, um, which was true for several of the large works. Anyhow, this is, uh, Darius Yektai actually went to school for art history, although he grew up in a home, uh, the home of one of the um, last living 
abstract expressionist painters out here, Manusher Yektai. Uh, so he had art and painting in his life from the very beginning. Uh, he's been painting out here for 25 years. It's only in the last two years that we've been representing him. And we are very excited about um, these three uh, paintings are um, really, they're just appetizers for the solo show we're having on June 5th for June 5th, 2021. And um, uh, let's just hope we can actually have an opening next, next June. Um, the rich tones of the underpainting and then the, um, these very sculptural elements on top of the resin are the, the part of this series. This painting is just, I think, a really bold and beautiful uh, cacophony of color and um, light. And you have the, the branches dripping down um, and, the, and the lily pads underneath. And, and we have like a beautiful composition. And Megan, good, you can get in there. <laughs> These paintings, you know, I can't even, I mean, I can touch it, but it's almost a little tacky to the touch. He's been working on this series of water lilies since um, June last year, and there's a lot more coming. So let me tell you, here's a really special one. This is um, white on white. There's also a very large black on black that is like a mirror. It's just incredible. And um, I, I think what's wonderful is he's like, catapulting off of art history. Um, it's a, it's a, a very fresh revisit to a very popular theme. Um, and let's see, where are we? Over here, we've got two of the gallery uh, workers, which is Megan and uh, myself, our favorites of uh, Ben Fenske. Um, this is um, Sturgeon Moonbeams, but this is actually the study for the major work that sold boom like that in August. As soon as we put it up, it sold. It was one of his largest paintings. And there is a theme that, I, that is going to continue into 2021, and that is we are asking our artists to scale up. Most of my clients seem to want larger paintings. There's a lot of empty walls out here. There's a lot of new. Um, we're grateful for the new, new neighbors that have moved here, and they are asking me for larger scale works. Um, these are two beautiful Fenske paintings, I would say. And then I would like to shift on that theme of large scale. By the way, before um, Ben Fenske, oh, there's Ben's major still life, Pable Torricella. Uh, we actually have a couple clients circling on that one too, so I take your looks now because I don't think it's going to be for public consumption for much longer. <laughs> um, ben Fenske's solo show is slated for August 20. I think it's 28th, yep, August 28th. Um, it's the spot in the season that we usually so show his work and we hope you, that, I think by then we'll have an opening. Um, and here is, Ben Fenske by the way is Minneapolis, or Minnesota. Here's another Minnesota painter. This is Carl Bretzky. He's more known for his Hopper-esque nocturnes from Sag Harbor and from around where he's painting. But this painting, is of the dunes in Amagansett, right between Amagansett and East Hampton. Um, it is called Beyond the Dunes, and it's 40 by 60 inches. To date, this is the largest Karl Bretzky I've handled, and I believe the largest one that he's done. Uh, we are expect his show is slated for May 8th. It's the same time in the season as last year. And this um, painting is going to be one of several larger works. So this is brand new to the gallery. Uh, again, in the gem show, it's not often that we show major new works, but this is an appetizer to um, get you to pay attention to our schedule next year. Uh, this is a beautiful, a beautiful depiction, very um, expertly observed. There's, there's a little house in the mist here. Um, I just love the composition that's kind of swooping in. And, and if you get up close, I don't know if you can see that with the camera, but there's there's these little lavender dabs, um, which is probably flowers, but in, in, in here, I believe it's also the shadows. I just think it's really gorgeous. Um, I'm also very happy to show you that we only have a few Sarah Lamb paintings left. She's been um, very popular with our clients this year. Uh, this is one of my absolute favorites. Sarah Lamb is on the schedule for August 7th. We're gonna have a lot of new work by Sarah Lamb. 
Um, this, I think, is really interesting because it's a very contemporary uh, uh, composition. Uh, there's no doubt about the center, the center object, and it's just, sent, you know, it's um, created almost like an icon of lavender. Uh, and her ability to create the atmosphere and to have the crisp thing pushing forward, I mean, the trompe l'oeil nature of her still lives is alive and well. Um, let's see, that's Sarah. Oh, and here is one of the only remaining large paintings by Mark D'Alessio of his trip to California. Um, we have both Tina and Mark were the anchors to our California Dreaming Show last summer. And uh, this is a very beautiful, important painting that's still here. And I would highly recommend that you go and have a look. Even at that exhibit page, you can see a lot of the, the plein air sketches were sold. Uh, there's one or two important major works still available. Ooh, and here, here's John Morphis, the Trump Lloyd um, single object artist. Um, he's going to be uh, one of the important artists in one of the group shows this summer, probably mid-July, mid but I, I haven't confirmed that yet. Um, we've actually already sold the painting that was up here, and this is a cash and carry show for the clients. If you'd like to buy a Christmas present, you can come into this show and buy it. We'll wrap it and it'll go, go out, um, and we'll replace it if there's something like that. We'll put something new up, and this, this we just put up yesterday, because it was, what was there before? Uh, the enameled kitchen cup. Okay, so there was an, another enameled cup on the same background, very similar composition that we sold, actually right before the show even opened, I believe. We're gonna swing around and look at the beautiful salon-style wall. These are smaller works, mostly. Uh, there's so, some important paintings I wanna, I wanna highlight. Uh, this is Matthew Weagle. We actually had two cherry still lives that sold right away at the beginning of the show, but we do have two um, poinsettia paintings by Matthew Weagle. We haven't shown his work in a couple of years. Um, there's another, there's up there, I don't know if you want to get that, but it's, that's his pansy painting. He's a GCA artist living in New York, and uh, we're very glad to reintroduce him to our clients. Um, I think one of the most important paintings to show here are the two Kelly Carmody paintings. Um, Kelly is a, a, a well-known, established portrait painter, and she has been working her way away from the academic palette and the Trump Loy illusionistic figurative work that she was trained to do towards a more expressionist, almost abstract, joyful look at still lives and interiors. And she, I just visited her studio. I don't know if Megan will be able to put some images in there, but she's working on really very interesting things. Um, when I see this, I think of Milton Avery and I think of Fairfield Porter. Uh, she's been able to distill uh, the subject matter to these abstract shapes. Um, and the background is almost as important as the foreground or uh, equally important in the overall composition. Uh, she's letting go, she's learned all the rules and she's letting go of some of them to create a, a, another reality. And I'm finding this fascinating. Uh, I drove all the way up to Boston in the middle of the pandemic to see what she was working on. Um, and this uh, is another one of the paintings that made me interested. It's called Sunny Window in the Mirror. Um, again, she's abstracting pa panels of light and dark and color and creating uh, something very intriguing to me. And I also love the more contemporary frame that she's doing. Um, oh, by the way, here's another Matthew Weigel. <laughs> I just I forgot about that. Um, we're very, here's another um, Karl Bretzky. Carl Bretzky is, some are saying like Hopper or Grant Wood. He's got that kind of Midwestern emotional content. Uh, compared to most of my artists, he's got an incredible ability to crop his pictures to tell the story that he wants to tell. And if you were walking in the gallery, I would explain that in high school he worked for a photographer. So he has been cognizant of how to frame a picture for a long time. 
Um, and I, let me just see if I talked about Sarah Nelson. We need to talk about Nelson. I'm going to bring you, where's the, well, I'm gonna bring you around over here. This is, um, there's a couple, these are true gems. This is a handcrafted frame that, of a design that Nelson created in response to me wanting something a little more contemporary. The frame is made in Pisa, Italy, not far from where the painting was made. This painting is one of his um, little bagno paintings. It's a, a beach club in, in Via Reggio. Nelson normally would paint there for um, every weekend in the autumn and even in the winter. And he is stuck in America because of the pandemic. So we have a lot of umbrella paintings here, small ones, but we won't be getting any new ones for next year. And Nelson White is going to be having a solo show for the first time in many years on June 26th. Um, one of the things I would say about Nelson that's very interesting is that he's got this real, he's not afraid of paint. He's just buttering it on there. Um, he's starting to get some traction at the auction houses and there's more details there I'm going to go into later. Uh, but I would uh, highly recommend that you consider one of those for and one of these beautiful small gems um, for Christmas this year. Oh my goodness, Victor Budko. So Victor, he's kind of slipped in under the radar here. We, um, he had a show in June uh, with Sarah Lamb. Was it June or July? June. June with Sarah Lamb. Um, he delivered a lot of gorgeous paintings. And he actually was based out here. Victor Budko is in his 30s. He's originally from Russia. His father and his grandfather were painters. Um, and they were painters of note out in Moscow. Uh, he's actually in Moscow right now, but Victor uh, has been delivering like rock solid painting after rock solid painting. And in fact, he responded when I asked for larger work. He brought some paintings in here at the end of the summer. We didn't even really have an opportunity to market them all and we're, they're selling. He's, uh, this is a beautiful painting from a trip to Vermont. Um, one of the things that Victor is also excellent at is creating this more dramatic landscape, uh, comp composition and landscape. And he also has a very great sense of color and drama um, with the blue, the red, and then this lavender with the, the river snaking through. Anyhow, uh, Victor is going to feature quite large at, in one of the major group shows that we're having this summer. Uh, we want to give him enough time to make paintings because he's based out here on and off. And uh, I think the, the green doesn't even come out till May. So y you should see a whole host of new works by Victor for in this next summer. Oh, and while we're here, quickly, this is one of the more popular Stephen Levine paintings. We just picked this up um, after we've had such luck with the other hats. And um, this, I doubt this painting will last very long either. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I think that that's all we have to introduce the GEM show. And I just want you to know that it's um, the pandemic, it seems to be uh, heating, as they would say in England, hotting up. We are going to be a little more cautious as to who we let in the gallery starting this week. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if all of the businesses are shut to customers um, right around Christmas because of the numbers. Uh, but I want you to know that we are here and we're working and we're reachable by phone, by Zoom. We're also delivering um, white glove and white mask delivery. We're willing to come to you to show you works if, you, if you're in the, in the tri-state region um, over the next week. And um, I just want to say Merry Christmas to everyone. And I think we're going to record again at some point, I'm not sure, but I want you to know that, the, that we are very grateful for all the business that we've had a really good year. We're grateful for the business that we've had and we're wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.